It's a simple process which involves the keeper regularly pouring water into a funnel above the nests. Today's programme shows how that process can be made fully automatic. The cost is around £35 and can be constructed by anyone with an average amount of DIY experience. I shall also be describing an automatic room lighting system to supplement those dull winter days. But first the water supply. The design utilises a small aquarium filter pump to pump water from a storage tank to a feeder tank fixed above the nests. The feeder tank serves three purposes. Firstly, it provides fresh water for the rest of the birds in the aviary. And secondly, it acts as a vacuum brake to prevent the water from continuing to flow due to siphon action when the pump switches off. This would be a danger when the nest trough is below the water level in the storage tank. And thirdly, it acts as a pressure regulator, effectively isolating the troughs from any surges from the pump. So what is this magical device? It's a 600 millilitre bunny water bottle like this one, available from pet shops. The nozzle here contains two ball bearings, which act as a valve and must be removed. File the end down a fraction, or use a hacksaw, and the balls will drop out easily. Sandpaper the edges and rinse out with water to remove all traces of iron filings. The inlet is made with an 8mm drill and slowly enlarged to make a tight fit. The bottle is now ready for mounting to the board. Use a slim sturdy wood such as plywood. The bottle is strapped to the board using 30cm tie wraps. This is the board that we're going to be using for this demonstration. It is not a board which I would use in practice. This is not sturdy enough. This is in fact hardboard and not plywood. However for the purpose of this demonstration it is totally in order. Place the bottle on the board in the position where you, you would like it to be. Nozzle facing downwards. Mark the line of the ties, three centimetres in from the right hand side of the bottle. Three or four centimetres is appropriate. Three or four centimetres in from the left hand side of the bottle. Alright, we've now got a line of the ties. <coughs> now, join these together. You don't need a ruler really. Mark out the holes you're going to drill. Approximately three cent three centimeters apart. We'll have one there. We'll have one there. And do the same for the other side of the bottle. One there. One there. Those are the holes where your ties are going to go through. Now the ties 
the five centimeters across, uh, five millimeters across. So we're, we're looking for a drill six millimeters in diameter. The board has been drilled. Is ready. Is ready for fitting the bottle to the board. Those are the tie wraps. Feed the ties through. First the tie is in approximately the correct position. Make sure the the ratchets are on the inside here, otherwise it won't lock. <coughs> Place your bottle in its final position with the nozzle facing downwards. and insert the ends of the tie wraps through the heads. Hey look. They will start to tighten. Be careful when you tighten them up at the end. Now that's enough for the moment. The bottle is now immobilised, however, there's still sufficient slack there to make some final adjustments. As you can see, it can turn a bit, and that's the way you want it. Just enough to be able to turn it. As one can see, the nozzle, if I can get this in the correct position, the nozzle. Back of it. The nozzle is approximately parallel to the board and that's the way you want it. Once it's in that, once it's in that position and it's fixed to the board, it's ready for mounting above the nests. Fix the feeder securely above the nests and attach the nest inlet tube to the nozzle. It can be secured in place by an MWO Jubilee clip. Make sure the bottle is in a horizontal position, but if in doubt, use a spirit level. The storage tank can be any ball valve operated storage tank, such as a domestic hot water supply tank as in this case, or even a lavatory cistern. Whatever tank is employed, Make sure that it is first drained and cleaned before use. The filter pump employed is an ALB PF Mini, costing around £15 from pet shops. The outlet from the pump is connected to the inlet of the feeder by a section of 10mm plastic tubing. The length of the tubing is important because it sets the flow rate into the feeder. This is dependent on this length and the vertical distance between the feeder and the pump. Some experimentation may be necessary to get the correct flow rate, which should be around 500 millilitres per minute. In the system described here, the length is 7 metres, which is distributed around the attic. The tube is suspended from the beams on plastic coated hooks and can be secured with miniature tie wraps. Fit the tube to the inlet of the feeder bottle and preferably seal the joint with a plastic welder. Place the pump on the sidewall of the storage tank 
about 10 centimetres below the water line. This would prevent it from sucking up any debris which may fall to the bottom of the tank. The system is now ready for testing. Having checked the system, plug the pump into the power point and if all goes well, the feed bottle will start to fill up. Shortly afterwards, the water will start to flow into the nest troughs and out through the drain. After ascertaining that there are no spillages, mark the level of the water in the feed tank with a felt tip pen. The pump can now be switched off. Use small sharp pointed scissors to cut out a window in the bottle to provide water for your Avery birds. Make sure the lower ledge of the window is 5mm above the water line that you previously marked with a felt tip pen. Make the window 8cm long by 5cm high to allow a few birds to drink simultaneously. Budgies have problems with transparent materials so it is preferable to cover or stain the whole bottle with an opaque substance such as ink or packing tape to give the birds more confidence when drinking. A secure perch must be fitted directly below and parallel to the lower ledge of the window to provide a safe grip. I use a length of 500 amp PVC covered power cable stapled to a side beam. The pump is controlled by two identical 7 day electronic timers connected in series. The first acts as a fail safe timer and is set to operate for a 15 minute period 4 times a day. The second timer sets the operating period of the pump, which is one minute four times a day. The operating times for this timer must be within the 15 minute windows, which were programmed in the failsafe timer, preferably in the centre. Should any of the timers fail and be permanently switched on, then the maximum duration of the pump will be 15 minutes. The drain for the troughs consists of a small hamster feeding bottle cut in half and inserted into a hole in the nest floor. The original design used a 15mm tube which led out to the back of the cabinet and into a 22mm drain pipe fixed over the sink in the bathroom. As mentioned previously, I occasionally had problems with spillage due to the 15mm tube being too narrow. Future designs will use 22mm piping throughout. Winter breeding for budgies is not particularly difficult as they don't have any set breeding patterns. However, artificial lighting must be provided to supplement the poor natural daylight that we have in winter. The lighting must be strong, well balanced and distributed around the room. There are many designs for lighting, so I'll describe the one adopted for the indoor aviary, which is in the attic. The main lighting for the room, which measures 13 foot by 9 foot 6, is provided by a 60 watt bulb fitted with a reflector. This is necessary because the reflection characteristics of the roof material are poor. This lighting is supplemented by two 50 watt mains down lights positioned on the rafters. These use halogen bulbs which are more rich in ultraviolet light than standard bulbs and produce a spectrum closer to normal daylight. An individual 60 watt spot lamp is used to illuminate the breeding pen in the corner. All the lights are controlled automatically, apart from a 10 watt night light which is on permanently. Various lighting regimes are possible. One is to let the birds experience a natural dusk and to start the artificial day at 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. The dusk is important for food collection as it gives the birds advance warning of the night to come. An alternative approach is to allow a normal dawn and dusk and to break up the long night with artificial lighting for about an hour. This gives the hens an opportunity to leave the nest 
and also to stock up with food along with the rest of the birds. Switching the area lights off during darkness hours is potentially dangerous, even with a permanent night light on. So a special auto dimming circuit has been designed which reduces the lighting slowly and is preceded by an audible warning. It's a simple circuit which can be constructed by anyone with practical experience in electronics. At the moment of switch off, which is set by a seven day timer, an audible tone is produced from an internal buzzer. 45 seconds later, the lights start to dim. After a further 45 seconds, the lights are fully extinguished. Owing to the simple nature of the design, the dimming time period is restricted to a few minutes. A more sophisticated design is being developed to allow the dimming to take place over an hour or so to mimic a natural sunset. Well sadly this is the last program in this series of Avian World. In the next series I'll be covering amongst other topics the construction of a sophisticated hospital for your sick birds. Also a homemade incubator costing less than £25 and I'll be dealing with the behaviour of birds. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this series of Avian World. Until the next time, goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.